One, two, one, two. You know how we do. It is your boy BQ with the number one podcast in the number one place to be. I'm talking about the B side podcast for the Impact Lounge, number one place to be for the Impact Wrestling fans. So make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Going to be talking about Slammiversary 2020. Real big, real big deal. Lots of buzz, lots of excitement about the pay per view coming our way. So I'm going to talk and give you my thoughts and predictions for the show. I'm going to give you a few rumors as well that have come across my way. They may or not be major rumors to you. You may know some, may not know some, you know, but all I can do is give you what I know. And I'm not trying to tease that as some huge news, huge announcement, but, you know, got a couple rumors that have come my way. So going to be talking about that. And again, if it's your first time here, it's the number one place to be. And this is the number one podcast. I know I keep flip flopping with you guys between video, audio and all that. But uh, we're going to get some consistency here pretty soon for the B-Side podcast and uh, get it cracking. So we're going to get into some rumors. Uh, but first thing I want to get into with you guys is uh, I have this tradition. Every pay-per-view, every sporting event, always order food. I always order out. Usually do the pizza thing. This year I'm going with Postmates and I might do a local restaurant or just something different in my local area. So if you haven't tried that, check the description of this video. I'm going to be giving you some uh, some free credits, uh, or I'm going to waive your delivery fees actually for the rest of the week. So just click the link in the description and uh, get started with that. Get ready for the pay-per-view. All right, so let's talk about a few of the rumors that have come uh, my way. And you again, you may may or may not know some of these things. Uh, you're probably going to see my cats pop up here in the background. That's just how it is. I've got six cats. No way around that. And they like to hang out with me in my office when I'm doing my podcast. So uh, first thing is that there's going to be an appearance by a former WWE general manager at the pay-per-view. Now, there's a lot of different uh, names that can go through your mind when you're talking about this. I haven't watched that product in a while, so I don't know if they currently have general managers. I don't think they do. I could be wrong with that. But there's a lot of names from, from pretty big talents to you know smaller, lesser-known talents. You know, But uh, expect to see... A former WWE general manager at Slammiversary this weekend. This doesn't necessarily mean they're signed with the company. Um, it may not be a part of a huge angle. It may just be a one-off, but you're going to see former general manager at Slammiversary. Heath Slater, we talked about Heath Slater. I think Heath Miller is his real name. There's, he's been heavily linked to possibly debuting at Slammiversary. And he has been seen... Um, in the same area. I think I think Slammiversary is taking place in Atlanta this year instead of Tennessee. So all the talent is in one place. He has been seen uh, in that area with the Impact Talents. Not with the Impact Talent, but he has been seen at the same place they've been seen. So put it like that. So I think it's very possible that we're going to see him at the pay-per-view. Uh, what else I got for you guys? Tag Team Division. I already talked about this actually on my last podcast, but the Impact tag team division is going to be overgoing some changes and overhaul here pretty soon that could be mean actually different things it could mean they're just beefing it up it could mean a complete overhaul it could mean they're even pushing some of the talents that aren't getting that push right now i've talked about that before with you guys where we have all these tag teams but the north hasn't have any had any angles with any of them any storylines it's almost like impact doesn't trust them so do they trust them do they not trust them i don't really know so we're going to see some changes it could happen at slammiversary or it could start happening after Slammiversary. There's going to be a focus on the tag team division. It could start with Anderson and Gallows, who are heavily linked to Impact. But even if you bring those guys on and they face the North, again, I've been saying this to you guys, the rest of the tag team has been fighting for nothing. They're just fighting each other for nothing. So you got to build these guys up, but you probably need to start bringing in a couple of other tag teams that you have more confidence in because Impact clearly doesn't have the confidence in those teams that they should knockouts gauntlet battle royal they haven't announced that we're going to see anybody or any surprises they haven't even teased that online as a matter of fact this past episode of impact josh matthews said 99 percent of the knockouts are in this match and the other one percent is madison rain now these are horrible numbers because that wasn't 99 percent uh, i get what you're trying to say but if you're really trying to use math that's incorrect but uh with that being said they haven't really teased anything and maybe what they said there was to throw you off the scent a little bit. But I, I spoke to a female talent who may possibly be in this match. Um, that's what I was told by her. So 
with that being said, we may see some additional entrants. They may be su complete surprises. They may be announced prior to. Um, they may be new. They may be returning. They may be even, I think there's even some of the current girls that are in, in, this, in this match. So I think we're going to see a couple knockouts that aren't announced for the match. Just put it like that. That may or may not happen, though, because what I was told was I don't know, but I think. Put it like that. Um, there's going to be some appearances at the pay-per-view that haven't been teased. And when I when I say that, I'm talking about, um, you know, these video packages that are teasing world champions and they're teasing people who were released by WWE. You know, even guys like Brian Myers, not former world champions, but, you know, um, being, were released by the company. So they've been teasing, you know, a certain group of people. A group of people who were former champions and big deals and just recently recently released. And then there's a group of people who are over here. Some who were maybe released back in the day. Uh, I say back in the day, but I mean in, in, in the past uh, that aren't former world champions. You know, the, all the buzz has been about group A. But from what I'm understanding, there will be a group B. And it's going to be some of the people we've been talking about on social media saying, hey, we would love to see this person return. Or what would it be cool if we saw this person or you know, so there, there's going to be a balance. It's not just going to be, hey, we're going to beef up the main event scene, you know, with these WWE guys. There should be a balance with some people that um, we've been chatting about, but they haven't been teasing necessarily. And you may or may not know this, but there's supposed to be a cinematic match at the pay-per-view. And I could I could see this is um, where we may see um, that former WWE general manager was talking about. Maybe we see them in, in a match like this. You know, I have to I have to believe that this match is going to debut people, whatever it is. Now, all I know is that I my assumption was that it was going to be Moose and Tommy Dreamer. That is not the case. My next guess was that it was going to be something with Hernandez and Rhino um, arm wrestling throughout the arena, uh, trying to do something funny and then bringing people in. So I was told that that's not correct either. So um, it could be something like the gauntlet, which would be kind of weird, but it could be the main event. But I'm just being told it's something different, and we're not we're not going to see this one coming. Most likely, maybe maybe you will. But so the cinematic match is supposed to be really good. We call it the cinematic match because that's what WWE has named it. Impact and Lucha Underground have been doing this, and they did you know nothing to brand it, nothing to name it. So you know that's what we're calling them now: the cinematic matches. So is that what um, where we're going to see this GM, and is that where we're going to see some other people return to the company? That's what you know. I'm kind of assuming is going to be the case but i don't think it's gonna be the not x division match uh if it was a knockouts title match that would be something really really different so maybe that's what it is you know who knows but we're supposed to get one um it could and it could be none of these maybe it's something else i don't know but um expect that and it should be really good all right so let's talk about the world title match first and foremost this is going to be the four, uh, what is it? So it's a four way match now. It was originally a five way match with Tessa Blanchard. She obviously was stripped of the championship. So we're getting Eddie Edwards, Trey, Ace Austin, and a mystery opponent. I think there's a high, 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 high probability that this mystery opponent wins the match. I brought this up in my last podcast, which is most multi-man matches don't have more baby faces than heels. So it's hard for me to assume that this return is going to be a baby face because then you got one heel in the match. So that's weird to me. Maybe that's what they do though. I, I'm just saying that's weird and that's a difficult match to book when you're, when you have too many faces. If it's a heel, um, I think that's going to be one of those dominoes that falls to where we say, okay, um, there's going to be an angle after the main event match is over because most pay-per-views don't go off air with a heel. I really think that this heel, that this person who shows up is going to win the match. I think that is going to be our next world champion. I, I can't, I can't think of a surprise debut type of match where someone showed up and didn't win the title. All I can think of is Johnny Impact at the bound for gold, gauntlet for gold, and but they but then they manufactured based off that a, a feud between him and Eli Drake. So even though he lost, he was still the number one contender de facto, pretty much. So that's that's the only situations that happen. The the entrant the surprise entrant loses and becomes a number one contender like the next day, or they win the match. That's just how it is. They're not going to be you know 
Trey's not going to win the world title and the mystery opponent's laying on his back or gets pinned. You know what I'm saying? That's just not the way it works. Who do I think is this This is going to be, though? Who do I think is going to be the mystery um, entrant? My gut really tells me it's Eric Young. I think a black horse, a black horse, dark horse is Mike Bennett. But it's hard to picture for me Mike Bennett going off the air with the world title. That's why I said if a heel wins this, I expect some kind of bigger angle to happen after. So this whole tease with the three cups and all that, I see, whatever that is, I can see closing the actual show if a heel wins the world title. You feel me on that? So I'm going, but I am going with the mystery opponent winning this match. Let's talk the gauntlet. The knockouts gauntlet, number one contender. Now, I know a lot of you, when you try to come up with your your winners and your predictions, you say, okay, well, I think this person's going to win the match because I think this person's going to win the knockouts title match and then they're going to feud. You know what I mean? You, you're going to say, okay, if you think Jordan Grace is going to win, you're going to assume a heel wins. If you think Deanna's going to win, you're going to assume a babyface wins. All right? Understandable. I'm going to try to not think of things that way. Because I'm going to try to go with who I just really think is going to win the matches. At first, I thought Kylie Ray was guaranteed to win this thing. Now, here's something you got to think about, too. The opening match in Impact Wrestling is always won. I don't want to say always. Not, let me not say that and be wrong. 99% of the time is won by a baby face. That's just the way it effing works. Uh, I think uh, Ace Austin did win one uh, at the top of the year. might have been last year. But nine times out of ten... The babyface wins the opening match. So if that happens and a gauntlet match is first, you know, maybe Kylie wins this thing. I think Madison Rain is your winner, though. I think she's going to win. I think um, her character right now, her character work is the best it's ever been, in my opinion. She's not overexposed in the ring right now because obviously she's on commentary. Her locker room talk has, has been pretty good. I didn't think it was going to last more than a week or two, and it's, it's been good. It's been consistent. So I think she's your winner. I have a hard time looking at some of the other girls and saying, okay, they're 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 the winner. I don't think Taya. I don't think they're going to put her in the scene that quickly because remember they're going to start building up these tag teams here soon. So I think the tag team girls are more likely to lose the match, and the ones who are single in this match. Are gonna win. So at one point, I even had Kimberly as a dark horse, but um, I think Madison Rain's gonna win this thing. Madison Rain's been teasing that she knows stuff and that there's something big coming and something big is happening that she's involved. With. She didn't necessarily say she's involved with, but I just have this feeling in my head that we're gonna see some sort of reformation of the beautiful people. Now I know Angelina Love resigned with Ring of Honor in April, I believe. Uh, but it was maybe it was earlier than that. I'm pretty sure it was before the pandemic thing. Who knows what a contract status is with Ring of Honor with anybody at this point. So, um, and that goes with NWA also. I mean, we may see stars from that company, from Ring of Honor. But I feel like we're going to get some sort of reformation of the beautiful people. And I feel like they're going to help Madison win. Now, if you, if you go back to Madison wanting to do this whole... Uh, Madison Rain Golden Opportunity thing that completely disappeared, and then she acted like, "Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna debut the person who's gonna beat Jordan Grace type of thing." That completely fell off the face of the earth. Maybe she brings that back. Maybe you know, I I was always saying when I was doing my own fantasy booking, like I would love to see her bring Kelly Klein to the ring, you know, because it's possible if, if we go back to this, Madison could be the like the the final entrant in this thing. And she may end up saying, hey, I'm not wrestling. This person is. So we can see something like that. But I'm going to go with Madison Rain. Or if in my own fantasy booking head, if she did debut someone, that person's going to win. But I see Madison Rain in some way, shape or form having her held, hand held rate, hand, excuse me, hand raised at the end of this match. Let's talk about the TNA World Championship match. Moose and Tommy Dreamer. You guys know I have no interest in Tommy Dreamer. I have no interest in going old school, um, reliving ECW, watching the kendo sticks, the staple guns. I have no interest in that. I have no interest in this match. It's predictable. We know Moose is going to win. 
What I would have liked to have seen, though, in this build-up to this, because remember they played EC3's music one time. All these matches that Moose had with Suicide and Hernandez and these guys. Play AC3's music one week. Play Angle's music the next. Play um, fucking Sting's music for all I uh, care. Play uh, Eric Young the next. You know what I'm saying? You do this four or five weeks in a row of different music playing at the end of Moose's matches. That would have built some real, real excitement for this. Um, instead of Tommy Dreamer, I would have liked to have seen them say, okay, we have this person returning to wrestle for this title. You know, give us one one tidbit um, of a return. You know, give us something to work with. That's what I would have liked to have seen and see that person lose and then bring someone else again. You know, but they, they went with Dreamer, the real safe option. And I guess they felt like he was the, you know, the top of the mountain. <laughs> because as I've pointed out, he's been wrestling Impact's past for a while now. Um, and I pointed out that they haven't communicated that to us on TV. And I had a few people blast me in the comments saying, no, they have communicated that. Yeah, this is, since Slammiversary they have, but they haven't over the last year and a half that he's been doing this. So they actually had an opportunity to really long-term book this a little bit better. But, you know, it is what it is. This should be one of the real exciting parts of the night. We just like when this match happens, it's like we can't wait for it to be over so that we can see who's coming out, you know, and who's going to feud with Moose. Now, something I was told was that Impact is so happy with Moose's work right now that it lessened the blow for them for losing Tessa Blanchard. Um, so it wasn't Tessa wasn't something they were like collectively freaking out about backstage. Like, how do we replace our biggest star? They're so happy with Moose's work right now that it made getting rid of uh, Tessa Blanchard, not bringing her back a lot easier. Um, with that being said, Tessa goes on a list of stars who held the, the championship on their way out of the company and Impact has been faced with this. We got to strip you or some kind of bullshit. Um, this has happened several times over the last few years and it needs to stop. All right, so let's talk the tag team championship match, the North versus Sammy Callahan and Ken Shamrock. I've been told that Sammy has something big planned for his character. This could happen at Slammiversary. It could happen after, but they got something for Sammy. I'll put it like that. They've got work for him. They've got, they've got an angle for him. I don't think it's holding the tag team championships, though, especially now with Ken Shamrock. I was, I was kind of against this match in the sense that I just wanted to see them have some confidence in their current teams. I really wanted to see Falabon TJP in this spot. But it's a pay-per-view and they're like, we got to do a big. And as I've pointed out several times, the North only defends their titles against the Rascals and makeshift teams of main eventers. So, um, and that's obviously helped elevate their status a little bit because they beat some big dogs, you know. They beat Eddie and Tessa and... All these people. Um, this one's a little hard to call, though. The, the, the easy money is saying the North is going to win this match and Anderson and Gallows are going to show up afterwards. That's that's the easy money. That's, that's what we all assume. But a feud like that doesn't necessarily need the titles. And I talked about Impact's going to focus on this tag team division soon. It could be bringing in new teams. It could be making the teams that they have now matter because right now some of them don't matter. So a feud with Anderson Gallows and the North doesn't need the belts. Now that hasn't stopped impact in the past. You know, I talked about LAX and the OGs that, that didn't need the belts, that they needed to put the belts on someone else and let them build the division while this feud was happening. And that didn't happen. But that's what I want to see, what I would like to see this time. The belts be on someone else. I just have a hard time thinking it's Shamrock, uh, Shamrock and Sammy, though. I have a hard time thinking they're going to defend versus the division. But I would like to see the belts on someone else while they build the division. And then the Good Brothers and the North, you know, have this amazing tag team feud that starts putting Impact's tag team division on the map. Because in my opinion, it's it's 
it's getting up there to where like AEW's tag team division is. But I mean that by talent, not by, you know, popularity or, you know, the booking hasn't done most of the tag team division any favors. But I'm going with the North here. I, I just think that's the safe answer and that's what I'm going to roll with. All right, so knockouts, title match, Deanna Perrazzo versus Jordan Grace, who is the champion. Now for me, Jordan Grace has been a really boring champion. I think she's talented. She's devoted to impact. Those are all good things. And I'm not blaming her necessarily, but I think the title reign's been boring. You can blame it on the pandemic a little. They try to push her as what? Well. I'm this fighting champion. She's really not really defended the title that many times. You know, a lot of champions say that I'm going to be a fighting champion. And they're, they're, there's really nothing that to, to support that. And I kind of see that in this case as well. I really think Deanna Peraza wins this match. Now that means in my booking and my predictions that Madison wins and Deanna wins heel versus heel. Like that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but I'm still just going with who I think wins. You know, whoever wins a knockouts match doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be the number one contender the next day. You know, Eddie Edwards won the bound for whatever the hell they call that, the call your shot gauntlet, which was a big failure in my opinion as a gimmick. He's getting his title shot now at Slammiversary. You know what I'm saying? So, and, and I don't even know if that's based off the freaking win that he had. You know, like that was just a complete mess after he won that. But it doesn't mean, uh, you know, because Brian Cage left the pay-per-view as the champion. Bow for glory. Him and Ed, Eddie didn't fight for the title. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I think Deanna wins this match. Much like I said with Tommy Dreamer, where they keep on TV because of the YouTube numbers, like Deanna perrazzo has got some pretty good YouTube numbers, and she has momentum and buzz right now. You know, at Bound for Glory, they said, okay, we're going to use Tennille Dashwood. Tennille Dashwood is a big name, but she has no, she had no buzz at the time, you know? Deanna is a different story because she left NXT, or she was released, but she asked to, to be released. Um... Now, you know, now people want to see what she can do when she gets the ball and run with it. And she wants to prove that to people. So I have a hard time believing she comes over and loses. You know what I mean? And then just falls right back into the division. I see, um, I see Deanna winning this thing. I just think she's got, got too much buzz. I don't think that they, Jordan's doing anything for the knockouts title right now. So I think Deanna Perrazzo is your knockouts, you know, your next knockouts champion. Absolutely. Um. And then I even, you know, I even said many times on, on my shows that I thought she was going to go to AW because they needed her. You know, we were lucky enough to get her an impact. She can work with anybody. And I think she should work with everybody. So I got, I got her winning. There's the, there's the, you know, the chance that Jordan wins this thing. And then someone debuts after, you know, we've been, we've been calling for Kelly Klein for quite some time. So maybe we see something like that. I, I don't really know. Um, but I still got Deanna winning. Now, usually a wrestling pay-per-view has one or two title changes, and it's never all. It's never all, which I think I think it would be cool one day to just see them all change. So we're ushering in a new era, you know what I mean? But I think that the world title, obviously, <laughs> we have a new champion. And then I think the knockouts division, uh, the knockouts title changes. I think Willie Mack absolutely wins this match with Chris Bay. You know, I kind of liked, I, I, I want to say because I've been real critical about Johnny Swinger. I've come around on Johnny Swinger the last few weeks, uh, especially when he dressed up as suicide. I I, <laughs> I came around. And then you even have sympathy for him this week when you found out Chris Bay was using him. But Chris Bay's the future of the X Division, but not now. He's not going to win it now. Um, Willie Mack is going to win again. Again, he to me, he's kind of a boring champion, but I think he's going to gonna run with it. When they said Swinger was going to be ringside, I thought that cleared the way for Rich Swan to just show up. So I would even be super shocked if Rich Swan was in the main event, to be honest with you, as the, as the mystery person. I, I wouldn't be totally shocked, even though I don't think that's the smart way to go because we're expecting to see a debut. But I think Rich Swan kind of shows up in some capacity and maybe helps Willie win. I don't think he's going to screw him over. I think that storyline had potential when they were taking on the North. I thought Willie was going to end up screwing him over because I thought Willie needed a gimmick overhaul really badly. But but I think we're past that. I think we're past any like dissension between those two. So I think we could see that happen. This match probably will be the opener and Willie Mack 
is going to win. Cause I, you know, as I said, the, the baby face usually wins the open opening match. It's just kind of the way it works, you know? So, um, definitely got Willie winning this thing. The X division is going to need some work here soon as well, because that's starting to feel like a bit of an afterthought. Um, we used to see the X division with all these multi-man matches and we stopped wanting that. And we started wanting to see angles and then we started getting angles, but then it was like, we started forgetting about the rest of the X division. So I do want to see something, some kind of shot of adrenaline into the X division. I don't think it's going to happen with Willie as the champion. I thought it could happen with Ace. I thought Ace should have had a longer reign. Obviously they have bigger plans for him, uh, putting him in the world title scene. So I don't even think he ever wrestled again for the X Division Championship after losing it. So, you know, we'll see. But I think this is going to be a match that will just clear cut. Willie Mack wins. And then we see what happens next. Will he, will he have a feud with uh, Rich Swan? I don't really know. But I, I, I see Rich Swan Like, he was on the cusp of getting into that world title scene. So I don't really see him doing the X Division thing. You know. Who knows? But that's it for Slammiversary. They've got six matches announced. I try to get some clarification on if there's going to be any other matches. I was just told, I don't know. There's just going to be surprises and debuts. And I don't know if that's going to mean extra matches or anything like that. But usually there's like eight matches on a card. Now, obviously with the gauntlet, you know, that could go a little longer than a standard match. And maybe we get a surprise match on there. I don't know. Maybe Moose wrestles again after he beats Dreamer. I, I don't know. We could see someone wrestling a second time, though. I don't know. But all I do know is that Slammiversary looks amazing. And I think it's going to be a blast. I'm, I'm not going to be reviewing Slammiversary, but I am going to be doing a podcast after Slammiversary. The plan is to live stream it because my new computer will be here by then. The plan is to live stream and um, talk about who appeared at Slammiversary. It's not going to be a review show, a boring review show. Like I'm getting away from that here at the Impact Lounge. It's just going to be, hey, here's here's all the big talking points. Here's all the people who showed up. And we're going to get excited about that. Not about, oh, I think the booking was this and this. You know what I mean? We're just going to get excited about that. And then I'll read off the results as well. So stay tuned for that, the B-side and the Impact Lounge. And I'll talk to you soon. Peace.